Hey there everyone, this is Jessica from DomesticatedMe.com and welcome to my casita. Today we're going to be talking about Disney's Encanto, Disney Animation's 60th film. I was so thrilled to be able to watch a pre-screening of it a few days ago and so today I'm going to be sharing my review of it. Now rather than just give you uh, what I liked, what I didn't, I'm going to be giving you context for some of the background of the film. Something that I, at least my interpretation of the context that the film is based on. So we're gonna be talking about history, a little bit of the culture and some family dynamics from Colombia. This film is based and inspired by Colombia. So I'm gonna give you some more context and background on that. I will be giving you a little bit more about the plot line, not necessarily spoilers, but if you just want to know what was in the trailer and nothing more than that, I will let you know when I'm going to be divulging a little bit more about characters and plot. But if I get to any point where it's going to be a little more spoilerish or I'm going to be divulging a little more than what you've seen in the trailers, I will let you know that and give you a timestamp so you can skip that if you want to miss it. Speaking of timestamps, I'm going to be breaking down my analysis of the film in the description box below, so check that out in case you want to skip any part and get to a certain section or category. All right, with all that said, let's get started. Because this film is inspired by and based in Colombia, it's to no one's surprise that it is highly influenced by magical realism. Magical realism is a literary genre that started and really flourished all over Latin America, but specifically Colombia. The great master of magical realism is considered to be Gabriel Garcia Marquez and his famous novel, What is the Epitome, the Gold Standard for Magical Realism is 100 Years of Solitude or Cien Años de Soledad. Now, the reason why this genre was so successful in Latin America is because forms of magical realism has really existed in our culture forever. Um, I remember growing up and hearing stories from my family about things that happened that sound normal and real, and then there would just be these touches of the incredible, the, the magical, if you will. And in works of magical realism, there is a realistic fictional setting with these elements and moments of magic within them that are presented in a matter-of-fact kind of way. It just is. Now, we know that this film is inspired by magical realism because the creators talked about their inspiration not only being Colombia, but this literary genre that is so that Colombia is so well known for. And we can see that in the film specifically with butterflies. Butterflies were all over Gabriel Garcia Marquez's works and all over 100 Years of Solitude. And it's really that those butterflies to me are an homage to Gabo as he's affectionately called. Now let me be clear, Disney's Encanto is not magical realism, it's actually kind of the opposite. We have a magical setting, a magical premise with elements of realness in it. And that realness comes from character traits and family dynamics and family problems within the Madrigal family. Now what I do enjoy about the way that magic is presented that is very similar to magical realism is that we don't really get an explanation of why certain things happen, why, why, um, where the magic comes from, why the magic happened, and how each person gets their magical uh, ability. For example, was Luisa the strongest five-year-old in the community and that's why she became the strong woman? I don't know. It might, I don't think so, maybe, <laughs> but um, it could be just random and it's just presented. It is what it is. It's a matter of fact. You're not going to get an explanation and that's something that if you are a fan of magical realism, you know that. It's just, it just is. But I can understand why that might frustrate some, but this is why I created this video to give you a little more context about maybe why things are the way they are in the film. Now, I was all ready for the magic based on the trailers, but I was not prepared for the realness. And as I mentioned, some of that, these elements of real, of reality come through character traits and family dynamics at play. We also see that in some of the historical events that are depicted in the film. Now in my previous reviews of the trailer, I mentioned that I believe the timeline for this film was the turn of the last century, and I think after watching it, that is confirmed. Now, let me give you a little bit about Colombian history. There's something called the Thousand Days War that happened between 1899 and 1902, and it was a revolt by the Liberal Party after the Conservative Party held fraudulent elections in order to maintain control. This civil war caused the deaths of about 100 
100 to 150,000 people, about 2.5% of the Colombian population at the time. Okay, so here's the part where I'm going to talk about something that we see in the film. So if you want to skip it, go to this timestamp so that you don't have to watch it. So I hypothesized that this is a time period in which Encanto takes place, and I based it mostly or solely on the costumes that I saw. But after watching the film, I feel like that's been confirmed. In the movie, we see that Alma and her husband and the three babies flee because of this violence in the place that they were living. And that is basically the origin of this town in the mountains, this magical town in the, in the mountains, because they were fleeing violence. That was personally touching to me because even though I was born in 1986 and I am far removed from that civil war, it's something that I've heard about since I was a kid, speaking about my great grandparents and my grandparents and the displacement that this civil war and the civil war after led, um, impacted my family and impacted many families, if not all families in Colombia. Now I really love that they included this, even if just in a little way, uh, because it illustrates how violence and civil unrest can displace innocent families and how and a person can become a refugee through no fault of their own. It also depicts how trauma of violence and displacement affects people for the rest of their lives and how that trauma can be passed down through generations. I think it's such an important concept for the world to look at, to understand now more than ever. Now we all know that Mirabel is the only member of the Madrigal family who doesn't have magical powers and I think it's easy for all of us to understand what that might feel like. But there are other complex family dynamics at play that set these uh, plot driving emotional undertones throughout the entire film. We see that the film also plays with perception a lot. Certain people seem a certain way but are actually different or feeling something completely opposite. Uh, there are events that happen where we are presented it in a certain way, but when we see the other side, we see, oh, that's not what happened. I think that's really fun. But again, this is where that realness really comes through. I feel like we can all relate to one or more characters of this film. And for me personally, the person that I really related to, that I was not expecting to relate to, was Luisa. All right. So now I'm going to talk about more of the characters and what they're going through that was not revealed in the trailers, but if you've seen interviews about the film, you've probably heard the actors talk about this. So, but if you don't want to hear it, go to this timestamp below so that you can skip it. So even though Luisa seems like the strong one, the tough one, she can handle it all, and even though Isabella looks like she's perfect and she can do no wrong, we see through song that all three sisters are not what they appear. You'll see that actually each of the sisters, all three of them, are struggling with their identity and their roles within this spectacular magical family. Now with Mirabel, obviously she's the only one who doesn't have magic powers within this magical family, so she's always trying to prove herself, trying to show that she deserves and belongs in this family. And even though Isabel seems to be perfect and that her life was just flowers and beauty her entire life, we actually see that she's willing to sacrifice her life and her future to continue to be the perfect daughter and granddaughter in this family. In Luisa's song, we hear her sing about the pressure, the immense weight of being the strong woman in the family. That not only does her family count on her strength, but the entire community, the town, counts on her strength. She's always problem solving. She's always doing something. She's always helping. And that pressure is actually eating away at her. And she also feels like if she weren't capable of doing the things that she does, that she would have no purpose. Then what's her purpose? What's her life mean if she can't be the strong person? And again, I was not prepared for how much I related to her because of that. Even though her song is amazing, I, I've tweeted out, it is a bop, it's a great song. It's, I, I love that song. The beats, the words, the lyrics, I mean, it was, I love, love that song. 
I was actually in tears throughout all of it because I just felt, I felt what she felt. I feel what she feels within, in my role within my family. I have to be strong. I'm in control. I need to take care of things for other people in my family. And so I just related to that. I just, I could not tell you how much I related to that. That pressure, that weight is, is intense. And, um, and then there's also the guilt of wanting to take a break and to step back but feeling like you can't or even worse being made to feel guilty because you're not doing enough or you should be doing more i feel like there's so many people who will relate to that and i feel like this will especially ring true to the children of immigrants and the quote responsible children of families one thing that is very different about Encanto versus other Disney films is that this film doesn't really have a villain. There's no bad guy, there's no evil character who's trying to bring this family down. What the issue in the film is that the magic is fading. The house is starting to crack. The characters are starting to lose their power and Mirabel is trying to figure out what is going on so that she can stop it and save her family and her casita. And this is the part where I'm going to discuss Abuela Alma. If you don't want to know more about her character and be surprised about her character arc in the film, then you can skip to this part, but let's talk about Abuela. Now, I'm sure many people are going to think negatively about Abuela Alma, but as someone who grew up with very strong matriarchs and as a parent myself, I can understand Abuela. Though it may appear that she's trying to present this perfect, strong front for the town, She's actually just trying to protect her family and protect her community. She wants to protect the magic so bad because she believes that is the source of the success of this entire town. She believes that the candle has protected them by giving the family these gifts, which has helped them all thrive. Now, we have to remember that this is someone who has been traumatized by violence. She knows what can go wrong. She knows what the worst case scenarios are. And that's why she's so desperately trying to grab a hold of what she has. She's trying to protect her family and her community. She's holding on white knuckled for as long and as hard as she can. So I understand Alma for wanting to protect her kids and hold on to them uh, out of fear and love because she doesn't want their future to look like her past. Now I'm not going to talk about cultural references too much because I feel like I covered so much of it in my Encanto videos, my previous two, which I will link below. But there are just a couple of things that I want to talk about. One of the things that I did not bring up at all, and I'm realizing now that this is not the norm for many people, is that this film is about an extended family, which I just didn't realize that we've never really seen in a Disney film and may not be what is normal to a lot of people out there. So that is why this might seem unusual to have such a big family living under one roof. It totally went over my head that it would be something noteworthy because of that is how I grew up. In my house, I grew up with my mom and my brother in one floor of the house and in the second floor of my house. Uh, lived my aunt, my uncle, and her children and their children. So I grew up with an aunt and uncle and cousins, and that is very much the norm in a lot of Latin American countries where generations all live under one roof. And what I love about this film is that even though there are so many members of this family, I feel like they did a really good job of presenting their each one's not only ability, but personality. I feel like we see that as best as possible for one film. And one thing that I have to mention that was in the film, I'm not going to talk too much about it, but one of the characters says miércoles. And if you're Colombian and maybe a Spanish speaker, you know what that means. But I say it all the time. And so when he said, I was like, ah, that's me. Uh, that's it. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, give me a thumbs up. All right, now let's get to the visuals. This film is absolutely beautiful. We are seeing the peak of animation, uh, period. Not just at Disney, but just period. This film is so colorful, so detailed. I mean, 
one thing that fascinated me was seeing the hair. There's different characters have different kinds of hair and the movement within that hair is just so beautiful. The way that they shade and light certain scenes and environments is amazing. And I love all the flora and fauna that they've included throughout the film. I'm really not a technical person, so I can't go into so much detail about what exactly I'm seeing. All I know is that it's incredible. All right, now let's talk representation. I covered that in my other films, but I gotta talk about it again because it just, it means so much to so many people. And it's not just Colombians who are gonna be, who are looking forward to this film. It's I mean, this film is breaking so many barriers. It's the first time that we're seeing an Afro Latinx character, Afro Latinx characters in this film. Just seeing someone that looks like you, seeing your indigenous traits reflected on the face of Isabella. I, I can't tell you how much that can mean to a child. I mean, if me as a 35 year old, I'm so moved by that because I didn't have that representation growing up. And I don't just mean, uh, Latinx characters in TV and film. I mean specifically Colombia and Colombians and Colombian life. I didn't have a film that I could show my friends when they inquired about my background. And even to this day, if I do a search for Colombian movies, nine times out of ten, they are going to be centered around violence and drugs and frankly someone who's been dead for almost 30 years and now my kids will have this they will know how beautiful their country is how how magical this place is um not the the animals the 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 vegetation the coffee the culture the music and i'm just so beyond thrilled for them all right, now let's talk about the music. I know that I've covered it before, but we need to talk about the music because it is incredible. Lin Manuel Miranda wrote the music and score for this film, and he did an incredible job. I spoke to him at an event sometime a couple of months ago, and he said, You have no idea how much research went into this film. And I told him, I don't, but I see it, and I can hear it. And they did the research. We get so many different sounds in this in this film because Colombia is filled with diverse music and they did a great job of capturing that. And I think something that's interesting about this film that's different from all of the other Lin-Manuel projects, so different from Hamilton, In the Heights, uh, Vivo, which was great too, um, is that Lin-Manuel Miranda has a certain style I personally can hear a song, I'm like, oh yeah, he wrote that. I can hear this is one of his songs. And there is an incredible blend of that within this film, like Lin-Manuel Miranda's style and beats and um, his touch with traditional Colombian music. So much so that some tracks, you wouldn't even know that he wrote it because he did such a great job of researching this music and learning about it. I mean, Carlos Vives' song, Colombia Me Encanto, if I would have heard that on the radio, I would have been like, oh, you know, Carlos Vives has a new song. It sounds great. It's not his song. He didn't write it. And for a moment, I thought that Carlos Vives wrote this song for the film. No, Lin Manuel Miranda wrote that song. And he, again, it sounds like a Carlos Vives song. And obviously, he said that he's a big fan of Carlos Vives, so he really wrote this song with Carlos's voice and style in his mind, and I just can't believe how well he did it. And the same whole through throughout the film, he really captured these sounds. He really learned and mixed it and blended it well, so well within the soundtrack. And I'm excited for people who are not familiar with Colombian music to hear Colombian music. And I hope that they enjoy it. I hope that they appreciate that this is something different. This is something special. Um, but yeah, I know that Colombians will really appreciate it and love it. Uh, I can't wait to see this film with my mom. I also have to mention that the creators of this film have done something very brave and bold that I don't think has ever been done in a Disney film before. And that is that they've included a song completely in Spanish within the film. And not just as some background noise while there's other dialogue happening. It's fully 
in the film and it's just important as the montage that it is playing alongside of well, usually what they'll do when they're doing movies that are based on other cultures and other countries they will throw in a couple of words or lines in that language but it'll mostly be in english so that the audience can understand and follow along for these English-speaking films. So Encanto is an English-speaking film. While most of the music is in English, this one song, Two Caterpillars, is sung completely in Spanish. I think it shows the respect that Luis Manuel Miranda and these creators have for Colombia, for their culture, for their language, that they are willing to do this move and possibly have people feel a little left out because they don't understand the words. Obviously, the song is also in English. You can find the English version in the soundtrack, and I'm sure it's going to be um, easily available um, because the Spanish version is within the film. I just think it was an incredibly bold move, and I loved it. And I'm sure that that song will likely be nominated for the Oscar because it is such a beautiful, emotional, heart-wrenching song but also hopeful song but it's a tearjerker it's it's absolutely beautiful i think that's going to be nominated but although there's lots of songs within this film that can be nominated colombia me encanto is absolutely incredible i love that song as i mentioned before and you guys know how much i connected with luisa because of her song about being under pressure i think that is also one of the best songs in the film not only is it fun it sounds great. It's got amazing vocals by Jessica Darrow, and it's super powerful and fun, and it's just a great song. So what were the lessons that I personally got from this film? I got that um, communication is very important. Not everyone is who they seem or going through what they seem. Uh, so you really need to check in with your loved ones because what they present may not be what's going on inside. So you have to check in on them and see how they're doing. Um, and I think that's a really important message, again, now more than ever. We also see the importance of letting go and allowing your children the freedom to be themselves and to make mistakes and to live their own lives. Not me, I'm never letting go, but there you go. Home isn't just a house and family isn't your blood relatives. It's also your community. And of course, don't compare yourself to others. Self-love and self-appreciation is everything, and we are all special in our own ways. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the description box below what your thoughts are. Have you seen the film? Are you going to see the film? Are you excited about it? Do you agree or disagree with any of the points that I made in this video? Do you have more context or background information to provide? Let me know in the comment section below, or just say hi, because I love to hear from you guys. Click or tap right here to watch my last video or click down below to watch another video that you might enjoy. Thank you so, so much for watching. Stay tuned.